Hello everyone, I'm Chris for Astro La Vista and tonight I'm hoping to get back to some deep sky imaging. I'm going back to basics tonight because the mat I was using, the ZWM5, was kindly loaned to me by First Light Optics and that has gone back now. And the mount that I own, that I usually use for planetary lunar and solar imaging, the EQ5 with the motor drive kit, is not ideal for deep sky imaging, but you can do it with um, shorter exposures and at shorter focal lengths. And that's because short focal lengths are less affected by tracking errors. And the servo motors of the EQ5 motor kit are nowhere near as accurate as a dedicated computerized go-to mount with accurate stepper motors and belt drives and auto guiding port and all that kind of thing. I've got to limit my expectations and accordingly I've chosen a bright target that's easy to find because I've got no go-to system. I've, I've chosen Andromeda and for probably three reasons actually, not just, not just the limitations of the mount. It's easy to find it's going to show up quite well on the short exposures I can take with this mount. And also I've um, cobbled together a bracket so I could attach my Sony A6100 to the Vixen saddle using a Vixen dovetail bar pinched off a six inch reflector and a quarter inch screw. So I can connect the two and I'm using that with my longer kit zoom, the 55 to 210 millimeter kit zoom. The thing is with the Sony is it's a stock camera and stock off the shelf cameras aren't usually ideal for astrophotography imaging of emission nebula, the, you know, the reds that you see on the pictures. But what they are good for are um, broadband targets like galaxies and star clusters. So that's what I'm going, that's another reason why I've gone for Andromeda, it's a nice broadband target and it should be framed pretty nicely in the large field of view of the wide lens, but still big enough to be worthwhile imaging. It's not gonna be a tiny dot that we're looking at. So back on the horse, but very basic compared to the equipment I was using, but sometimes it's really good to get back to basics and it's nice chilling in the garden with a pair of binoculars while I do it. So I'm gonna look at the moon that's fast rising behind me that's another reason i'm using short exposures is because the moon's basically going to wash out it's going to flood the sensor with light if i take long exposures so i'm taking 30 second exposures and the other reason i'm taking 30 second exposures is because that's all i can do using the programmable interferometer inside the camera it only goes up to 30 second exposures and I don't have a remote intervalometer plug-in to make use of the bulb mode on the camera. I'm going to look at the moon and tonight's special because in about six hours Saturn will occult the moon, it will hide behind it, it will pass behind it. So I'll be taking that mount out the front if it stays clear and getting a few hours sleep in between. But I'll reassess how we are after I've taken 100 shots at 30 seconds because I'm shooting between quite a narrow gap between the tree and the trampoline. So we may come unstuck there after 100 shots and the moon's just getting higher and the sky's getting brighter. So I will let that run off its exposures, reassess the situation, see if it's worth taking any more. If not, I'll process those and see what kind of image we can get out of it. And I'll do a bit of binocular astronomy in the meantime. It so happens I was lucky enough to capture the occultation sat and passing behind the moon about 4.30 in the morning, though it was cloudy, so it wasn't the best results. Even so, if you'd like to check that out, I'll pop a video all about that at the end of this video. Now back to processing the data we've captured for Andromeda. My initial problem was all the gradient and vignetting from the moon and from the optics. So I decided to take some flat frames after the fact. Um, I used my computer screen for that. What you need is a uniform bright white surface and you take quite a short exposure so it appears it appears like a gray image but it shows the 
vignetting pattern where it's darker at the edge and lighter in the middle on this gray card if you like and then you can use that to subtract from your light frames to give you a more uniform final image which it did help do but didn't fully solve all my problems processing wise i started with deep sky stacker which allows you to stack all your light frames dark frames and flat frames together bias frames so it improves the signal and noise and gives you a good base image to start processing with then into GIMP for some post-processing with some levels and curves to stretch out the data and bring out as much detail as possible. But with only 30 second exposures, I had to stretch the data a lot to bring out the outer spiral arms, though doing so caused more vignetting. So I chose to import the final image into Luminar Neo. It's got some decent tools in Luminar Neo. So first of all, I enhanced the image and after which that brought out even more vignetting. So I went down to the dodge and burn tool and that allows you to feather a tool to darken the background, but without disturbing the stars. So it's like a background subtraction that you kind of just brush over. And I did that being careful not to touch the galaxy. And here's the final image of M31 that I managed to produce. Now, to me, my immediate thought is it looks a bit like a fried egg in space and my processing is a little bit questionable, but I did what I felt I had to do with 30 second exposures so I could see more than just the core of the galaxy. We did bring out some of the outer arms, but we brought a lot of noise vignetting and so forth with it. But it is what it is and onwards and upwards. Hope you enjoyed that on some level. If you did, consider subscribing and joining along for the next episode and hit the bell notification. And a big thank you to my channel members that help support the channel and my Patreons. And hopefully I'll see you people on the next video. And for the occultation video between the moon and Saturn, click here.